Welcome to the Only Fools and Horses podcast. That's Blackwood, who played the part of the shadow in the episode, The Longest Night. How's it going? Very well indeed, thank you. Very well indeed. Nice and really happy to um, be here on your podcast. And everything's good my end. So, yeah, wonderful. Great. So, first of all, how did you get the part as the shadow in The Longest Night? Right, okay. So, my agent got a call from... Ray Butt, world famous Ray Butt. And I got asked to come down to see him at the um, TV center, White City, the old BBC TV center, White City. So I went down there, didn't know too much about him, but obviously I'm a big fan of Only Fools and Horses. And uh, he was there at the reception near enough. I mean, I I gave my name and, uh, you know, within a few minutes he was down. And he had this script in his hand, okay? And he looked like Del Boy. You know, he had Ray but he had a flat cap. He just looked like a bit of a spiv. And he said, oh, how are you, Vass? You all right? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm really well. He said, come with me, come on. So I followed him. Um, he took me in the lift up to the sort of sixth floor or something like that. And at the time, White, the, um, the um, TV sends at White City. It's like a, it's like a kind of a, like, it's like a maze, really. It's... it's goes round and round and you know round and round we went sort of like a half circle on the sixth floor round and round and round and a week and everything everywhere looks the same put me in an office no one's in the office i'm on my own and he said right here's this script read it and i'll be back and you tell me what you think and he's gone and i thought well do you know what i mean this is like i mean this was a long time ago and it was unusual so I opened the script and started to read it. Now, um, you know, I'm not not the fastest of reader. I love reading. I'm not the fastest of reader. Slightly dyslexic, but I, I actually read this script. I probably read it in the 30 minutes, maybe even less. So if you say a page is a minute, right, in filming, when, when, you're, when you get a script, a page is a minute. So I kind of, just, you know, and I was laughing. I was laughing because knowing the characters. And I had a vision already. And he came in maybe about 45 minutes later or so, and he walked, he said, right, what do you think? I said, it's really good, it's really good, really, really good, you know, it's brilliant. He said, right, do you reckon you're going to do it then, yeah? You do it, you're going to do it, aren't you? You're going to do it. So I was like, I was up for a TV series, right, Channel 4, and this is just a one, one ep. So I kind of did a young professional actor, I was like, and he said, come on, let's, let, 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 let's t- I'll take you back downstairs. You can hold on to the script. So he's rushing me back again around this half circle. I'll never forget it. Put me in the lift, took me down, I said, and I said to him, you know what, right now, I'm, I'm, like, I'm up for this thing at Channel 4. And I'm sort of mumbling away, but I'm sure, like, no, 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 don't worry about it. You want to do it, you want to do it. You're going to do it, isn't you? I'll talk to your agent. So then that like, boom, boom, like, out you go, gone, gone. And I phoned my agent, and I said to my agent, do you know what? I said, this guy's powers of persuasion, but, you know, I'm still up for that job at Channel 4. Yeah, they haven't said yes, they haven't said no. And in the end, yeah, it was, that was that was very fun. But in the end, I just basically in the end, what I did, I because the Channel Four people were messing around, uh, just the way casting goes sometimes. And there was a little bit of a time, and we were closer to doing the Only Fools and Horses. I just said, you know, I'm going to go with this, you know, and uh, that was it really. But it, he he stuck it on, as they say, he stuck it on me. <laughs> So they wanted me to do it. And Mandy, Mandy Fletcher, the director, you know, and even then, you know, like Ray was a, Ray's a guy who's very ahead of his time, Ray Butt. So, Cause you know, like he, he promoting women directors with high profile comedies back then in the eighties was just brilliant, you know? So, and she was really hot, really hot director. Wicked, wicked oh, yes. Mandy Fletcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think she went on to do loads of, loads of stuff, loads of stuff. Um, I think she did Vicar of Dimbleby and she's just got great CV. But yeah, smashed it. That was it. I was in. I was in. Because it was a true story, Vass, wasn't it? The um, the robbery, apparently. John Sullivan had read it in a newspaper that um, oh, really? a criminal and a security manager and security guard were in on it, weren't they, or something? Well, uh, do you know what? I used to have lots of chats with John Sullivan and... Um, he used to tell me loads of different stories. So, and I'm, I'm like one of these guys, 
when I'm working on something, you know, I take in stuff. I'll get into it. I got into, I had a lot of time with him and I think he might have said something to me about that, but I would have just let that, I would have let that one filter out a little bit. I wouldn't have like, oh, really tell me about it and blah, blah, blah. I know that because of the way I, I, I kind of try to undertake a role. But he told me loads of other stuff that I do remember, you know, like being a scene shifter and, you know, his life and such a lovely man, John Sullivan. A really, really cool guy, man. You know, and they, they, they. It, it's nice when you know they wanted you for something, you know. Mm. And yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe he did tell me that, but I didn't take it in. I didn't take it. In. You just reminded me because I, I wouldn't have because I would have been just trying because you know the whole process. It's um, it's like a rehearsal. So I meet David Nicholas and we rehearse. Uh, somewhere in Ealing, I think it was, yeah, like these, just like a church hall. And, you know, just good. so it's a week's rehearsal. And then we did the OBs, which are at the supermarket, which was in um, Ealing somewhere as well, Tesco's in Ealing. And it was a Sunday when they weren't open back then. And uh, we had the full place. So we shot all of that in one, right, in one day. So yeah. basically, yeah, so we shot all of that in one. And then um, this is this is the thing: the performance and the script on it's all in the manager's office because the locks, the the the, 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 um, the, the, the safe is on a twenty four hour time lock. So it, basically, the audience it was a live audience, old school uh, BBC TV centre. So they watched the OB on the big screen, like on the cinema. And I'm screaming, oh, don't take me up to the office, don't take me up to the office, not the office. And they're watching all of that on the screen. And then all of a sudden, when he goes, get in there, go on, John, is it Jimmy, is it John Biden? Um, I forgot the name of the security guard now. Um, Binden, is it Binden? Um, he, he, he was in EastEnders. Um, yeah, John, John, isn't it? John. John, John, yeah, John. John's chucked me in. And when he's chucked me into the office, the office, that's live. That's there on stage. On, on, and the audience are watching that. And, you know, and I said, just open the safe with the gun. And that's it. We're off. So it's like a theatre performance because we don't leave the office. Whereas most other owner fields and horses, Epps, you've got the living room, you've got the pub, you've got some OB, which they're watching. But this was really intense. This was on. Yeah. Uh, it's a very unique episode, as you say. And I think it's testament to the actors because it really works, doesn't it? yeah man yeah 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 we smashed it we really did and i've got to say i always say you know nicholas linder so i've got to send my love to nick because um he was the one that gave me the line shat ado yeah yeah he said really? he said say it like that yeah yeah because i was doing something but in the rehearsals i was like you know they seek him here they seek him there those policemen seek him everywhere is he in heaven or is he in hell that damn illusion and i can't remember what i was doing but obviously you know, in rehearsals, you're building up to it, you know, and, and especially when you know that you're going to be, re you're gonna, you know, you start the Monday, you know, you're going to be recording this on uh, like the Monday after or the sun, the Sunday, the Sunday. So you, it's just, you know, your, your process. And he's a gentleman because he didn't say anything to me, but obviously they could see that I was getting there. I was getting there. They could see what's going to come when we actually do this performance. And they could see that Bass is holding his own. And then he just said to me, I remember him saying it one day, he said, he said, D -d -d do it. Why don't you just say, just say, shut her down. <laughs> and I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that, Nick. I didn't think, you know, because some actors would be like, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> what? You're telling me how to tell my lines? How dare you? You see what I mean? But I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That works. Kept it in and that was it. The, when you mentioned about the flat, I was reading only three episodes. The flat didn't feature your episode. Um, Cash and Curry from series one. And also, um, who's a pretty boy as well? Where the sell the canary? They're the only three episodes where the flat isn't featured. Strangely, wow! You see quite that? Quite I did, yeah, I did not. That is really good. That's that's very interesting. So I did not know that. Mm, that's brilliant. Yeah. That is really cool, man. I mean, uh, yeah, I knew there was something special about it, and I had a few of my friends. Quite a few of my friends came down, you know, to watch it, and um, I could hear them just killing themselves with laughter in the. Um, you know, <laughs> up in the gallery there, they were just killing themselves. They were really having it off. And I, I was thinking, yeah, man, we've got this on the roll. And, you know, we didn't really have to stop many times. 
So he really gave it good to the audience. I believe 17 million people watched it that once. Wow. Yeah, yeah, on TV, because on it was on the Saturday. But one, what, what did throw me... Oh, no, 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 go, go ahead, guys. Go, go, you go ahead, because I'll, I'll, I'll go on a bit. Could you keep this? No, it's interesting. Go on, Emily, sorry. All right. Did you keep the script? No. I know. But then if I if I had kept that script, I don't think I would have I would have kept it. I wouldn't have done anything with that. Nah. A lot of people have asked me. I don't know, you're probably not asking me that, just ask me as the question here. Yeah. But a lot of people in the um, you know, like auctions and things like that, celebrity auctions and whatnot, they've asked me for that script. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have given it away because of the performance, you know. I really worked hard, you know. We re we all worked hard, and there's some classic lines in it, you know. When like Rodney steals my cigarettes, mm -hmm. and I take them back from him, and I say to him, "There's no need to steal." But the funny thing is, just before that, you know, they're like, you know, it's a 24 hours, so they've been sleeping, and then there's a door slamming from outside, like that, and Doug goes, "What's that? What's that? What's that?" And Uncle says, "It weren't me. Like he farted, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and then they see Rodney's guy for the cigarette. Everyone thinks he's going to get the gun and he picks out the cigarettes. So go. Then, because there's always the plonker line in every hit, there's the plonker. So it's where, and that's where he gives him the plonker. And then I nick the fags off him and I say to him, you know, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. There's no need to steal. And it's like, that line, that's one of my funniest lines. It's like, every time I think of that, like, even if I watch it, I think to myself, that's a really funny line because it's a real giveaway. Yeah. The irony right. of it, isn't it, really? You're there, yeah. Yeah. you can sit in the ground and you're throwing him yeah. off for nicking a fag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're licking my fags. Yeah, give me a back. Yeah, yeah planning. I can't recall an episode, Baz, sorry, where if you like the special guests, because they had a lot of special guests throughout the episodes, who had such a main part. I mean, I, I thought your character was like, of that episode, was the main character in it, above David and Nick, really. You had yeah. a really good part, didn't you, in it? Real. Yeah, because, because I had the gun, the Luger. <laughs> That's it. And, you know, I always said to myself, I used to say to myself, well, I, you know, I say, listen, you've got Rodney and Dell, right, in, a ma in the manager's office, right, the, the safe's on a time lock, and you've got a Luger, you know, toy Luger at that, but you've got the Luger, and they've got, they've got to behave themselves, and they really did. They did. I think David, David, they've really played it up. They played it. They, they, if you watch them, you know, if you if you study what they're doing and how they do it, they go about doing it. They really played it up. Proper. Played it down to play it up, if you know where I'm coming from. They were, they were so giving to me in the performance. It was a balanced mm. thing. And, you know, even at the end, when they've worked it all out, they're going to be the millionth customer and blah, blah. You know, um, Rodney, you know, um, sorry, David, and Nicholas, 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 Nicholas says, you know, he looks in the bag at the end. And he says, oh, these are going to have to go straight in the fridge when we get home. And I'm like, <laughs> just giving it up, giving it up, really going for it, you know, straight in. And yeah. Del Boy got your job as well as the security guard, didn't he? Got as well, the job as well as the security guard. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, he did. He got me the job as a security guard. Yeah. Just I, I like the line from Uncle Albert um, when, of course, you can't open the safe till 8 a.m. in the morning. He says, oh, well, can't you come first thing in the morning? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They've just given it up. They really were. And the, well, as I said, that is, you see, Nick gave me that line. That word, yeah, do it like that. And the rest, they just left me alone. They didn't say anything. They didn't overtly laugh. They didn't whatever I was doing in the rehearsals with Mandy. They didn't. They didn't. No, no, no. Just mm -hmm. you know, and um, they didn't play it down. They didn't play it differently in the rehearsals. They played it exactly the same. And you know, our you know, we break, we talk about different things. <laughs> but yeah, when I think back, you know, it was it was a great opportunity because because they're both. All three of them, and the show within itself, is a is a British. Um, well, it's a, it, it's a classic. It's a classic comedy series, you know. And to be a part of that is absolutely incredible, you know. It really is, because they, it's not like they say they don't make them like that anymore. But it, it, they, it's <laughs> they really don't make them like that anymore. They don't. It's all in the, the writing. Well, Ray Buck, 
you know, there's not many producers about like Ray, but there are, but obviously they have to kind of conform to how things are done now. But, and, but he, 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 was, he was ahead of his time. Because again, what people don't realize, well, some people don't realize it, but I like to let people know it was, all, it was directed by a woman, you know? And uh, she was, and she's hot, really hot, really. She knew her stuff. She weren't messing about Mandy. She's really clever, very clever director. So, you know, it, at all, it was, you know, and then Lennox, you know, Afro-Caribbean and everything. So it was all just, it was, it was really ahead of its time. Very good, very good. Yeah. And uh, Sir David Jason said he was very good in the role as the shadow. Um, what was it like working with him? Yeah, it was good. It was, um, well, it, I mean, it was one of my favourite shows to watch on TV, Saturday. Because those days, Saturday, you'd go out or, you know, your friend would call you on, on the house phone and you'd meet them or something like that. Things were done like that. So, um, but I would watch Only Fools and Horses because it would be one of the reasons to stay in, you know, type of thing. And... Um, the funny thing was that when we were rehearsing, it was like we'd all turn up in our normal clothes, you know, and they like, you know, Nick would be talking about taking flying lessons and, <laughs> and like David talk about this and that, you know. So that was like them. And then we'd get into rehearsals and they'd cut back out of it. And I kind of knew Nick. Nick knew people I knew. I know he knows people I know we know we know we've got mutual friends in the industry so he knew me he kind of knew of me you know so we were we were all right we were cool and then David's just really cool you know just cool and um Buster you know amazing but but when we turned up when we did the first filming at the supermarket luckily it was at the supermarket right and they turned up in their costume yeah in with the wranglers and the pleats and the the, the jacket and the ring yeah, yeah yeah and the cap and nick with the parker and his, his jeans too short at the ankles and busting and i looked at them I, I, my character went i just it, i had lost lennox for a few seconds honestly because i was like I was like watching them on television at home and I just started, to, I was laughing inside and I had to find Lennox again and say, do you know what, this, you got, this is a good, it's a good reason you really got your nut down and you really kind of worked in the rehearsals because this could be very, because you just want to laugh. When you see them in live dressed like that, you, you'll laugh, you'll laugh because it's very funny and he's doing all of that with his hands and all of that. Yeah. And all of that. Yeah. And all of that. And, you see, when they're doing all of that and you're watching them, you've got to stay in the character because if you watch them too much and get into what they're doing, you'll start laughing. <laughs> you will, because they're funny. They're, they're, like, they're like a unit, you know, a real mm -hmm. unit. They, they, they really do become Del, Rodney and Uncle. No messing about. Very, very good. That's another thing as well. I think people tend not to, I don't know, you know what? There's lots of comedies and things like that on now, but you watch that. That's old school. They they really do. They're doing it. They're really doing it. Yeah. <laughs> suddenly became. I suppose it suddenly became real, didn't it, Vaz? When they're in the costume, you know, rehearsing was one thing, wasn't it? In normal clothes, yeah. but when you see them in the costume, you think, "Wow, this is uh, this is really happening now," sort of thing. Full hundred, full yeah. full hundred and ten percent. So it was like they're gone. They're gone. Like if you don't know your stuff now you're finished they were they were the characters but i was ready for them but for a second i i i, I just thank god that i'd rehearsed hard and was ready for it i was ready for anything they threw at me right because and they didn't ramp it up they kind of did the same thing because you know there's there's a there's there's, a, there's this thing that happens in my industry sometimes sometimes you get some actors they'll um they'll rehearse a certain way yeah they'll give you like 65 percent that's to make the director happy right don't worry about you right and then come the performance when the cameras are on them and everything and it's all go you get the extra right you get the extra 35 whatever yeah and it it can it can not throw you but it can be a little bit like well uh 
Yeah, you didn't expect it. Because that 35, it's like, it's, it could be, you know, rather than raise his voice, he shouts. You know what I mean? So it's like, fuck, you know, you kind of have to react to it a certain way. Mm. Pardon my yeah. yeah, some actors are like that. But David and Nicholas and Buster, they, they played it very much like in the rehearsals. They ramped up with me. And they, they could see when I was getting it, they were stepping up with me and they didn't. So it was, it really, it, I could have, I, my performance could have, um, my performance, I mean, I'll say this, my performance could have spoilt it, do you know? Um, and they would have been struggling maybe to try some things to get it up there, but they didn't have to do that with me. They just kind of, I just did what I had to do and they just kind of just got on with what they had to do, be subjected to this, this fella here with, you know, and like, he, I knew him from somewhere. I knew him from somewhere, right? Did he used to sell shoes down at the market? No, 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 no. And I knew him from somewhere. But at first, I didn't know him. And then I started to know him. And then I remembered him. And then he remembered me. And, you know, my mum and, how is she? She's all right. She's still suffering from her feet. And he's like, yeah, well, that's the sh shoes he was selling. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, you know what I mean? There was a journey there. There's a little subplot. And he was working it and I was working it. Brilliant. Brilliant. And he did. He complimented me. You know, he, he was interviewed on something. And he said, you know, I went on to do some good things and everything. So, David, and I really do, you know, I send my love out to him all the time because it's such a nice thing to do because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to say that, you know. I mean, he's not like that at all, but he didn't have to. And, um, and I teach my children the same thing. People don't have to do things like that for you at all. You know, you have to try and make, make, things, make things happen for yourself, as it were. But when you get compliments from someone as prestigious and, and, and at the upper echelon of his career, like they said, David Jason, it's a good thing to take. You take that with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And what you were saying, like, how it was building up, like, how you knew Dell from somewhere, I, th I thought it was very funny with the watch. Do you remember? Because yeah, your watch, watch was from the market and you was now behind, was you or something, to open the safe? Yeah, bloody watch. Bloody watch. Yeah, Some people like, they'll, pull up, they'll pull up next to me in the car and shout, they tell me to put my window down, pull the window, go, bloody watch. <laughs> they laugh. Drunk. Yeah, bloody watch. Yeah, the, the watch. Because I bought it off him. My mum bought it off him. Did, uh -uh. It change, did it change your life, as would you say? Would you say that was, if you look back, because you've had a great career, would you say that was the one that really launched your career? Or you yeah, did well, a few things before, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, yeah, that's right. You know, the funny thing is, I'll tell you something. This is the strangest thing. I'm like, I start, like, I'm like nearly 40 odd years, 40 odd years in, as an actor, professional actor. Never done anything else. And a friend of mine called me up the other day and he was going, he's like, Frankie, he's a bit of a dull boy, right, Frankie? And he was saying to me, I said, how are you, Frankie? And he's like, oh, no, well, that's all right, all right, I'm good. He goes, you know what, Bash, you've been acting for 40 odd years, you know? And I was going, I was like, yes, Frankie. And then I started to do the, the equation. I was thinking, wow, that's a, no, yes, it is, he's right, he's right. And he said, yeah, yeah, you have, mate, you have, mate. And I said, well, where is this going, this conversation? Well, I'll tell you what. He said, Vass, I'll tell you, he said, they want to put your name up on the wall, son. You've got to put your name up on the wall. And I was thinking, it's interesting that is now. Funnily enough, I'm about to launch a website, my first ever website as an actor, because it's 40 odd years, current 40 odd years, 40 odd years, right? Got my equity card and this and the other. But what's happening is that what I found is that it's like my career is it's it, it's it's, it's going on to another level. It's going on to something else now. You know where I'm coming from? And then I can look, the strength is in the work. For instance, if someone's established 48 years and someone's established like say 10 years or whatever the case may be, it should be the fact that the person that's been established for quite a while, if you go into a shop, there's two restaurants, one's established there and one's established there. You know, I mean, it's like the food has been good in there for that long. So it's like, it's interesting. And, and I mean, being an actor and still in the business, and I've got a really good agent and everything. Like I'm very lucky in that sense. It's just a matter of, um, yeah, the, I'm very, I, I'm like eager to know what, ne what there is next because I'm, I'm ready for it. Because, you know, we all grow differently. 
and I, I still to an extent don't quite look my age and you know so but there's things there's things but listen only fools and horses um is it it, it put B, the, the bbc no they're very proud of that job that 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 show right and they know the actors that came out of that show and you know the bbc do great stuff now there's so much out there there is so much out there so really just it, it, in playing that role it's kept me in very good stead you know with m many of the other roles that i've played so i believe that i'm looking forward to playing a role where i might say to myself that was a little bit like lennox you know or something like that and it's a good thing because it's an interesting thing my industry and I, and, I, and as i said I've, I've been kind of just toying with it a little bit and you know you analyze things a little bit and um yeah you know it's kind of um I am very lucky to have played that role and I still can't quite work out what, like the, the circle still hasn't completed itself as far as my works are concerned. So it's very much, it's just one that's in my, um, it's in my portfolio, you know, but it's a very good one because it, it's like, it, it's, you know, every day I meet someone new every day that like, Give me a line from that. I've never met them before. So it's definitely in the um, UK people psyche and everything of that sort. And yeah, I mean, I, 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 I really enjoyed playing that role. Really enjoyed playing that role. I would like to do, so, I, I definitely think I'll be doing something again, similar, very similar, right? But different, at different circumstances, whether it's a film or a TV show or something like that. Definitely. Because, um, it, it, it's very hard to top, but if anyone can top it, I can. Great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that. Yeah, you don't worry. You'll be seeing it. You'll be seeing good. it. Yeah, well, have a look at your website as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it'll, be, it'll be coming up soon. Yeah, it'll be Vast Blackwood. Vast Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be on um, Vast Blackwood, obviously, but um, it'll be it'll be on vastaman.com. Um, but you, but it'll be out there. It's going to be out there, and it's a really good. It, it, I mean, I'm just getting it all doing all the written stuff and everything because I've been like that forty like forty eight years an actor, um, twenty three years a Freemason. So I've been a Freemason for twenty three years and an actor for forty eight years. But two things that I'm very proud of, and um, you're allowed to tell people you're a Freemason. I was also on the Sky, the Sky documentary, um, um, Inside Freemasonry. I don't know if you've ever seen that, or you should check it out. So I'm on that. And then tele the Telegraph did something recently on Freemasonry. Um, uh, Sunday, su Saturday Telegraph uh, in the magazine section. You can get it online. And I'm, I'm, there, I'm on that as well. So it's something that I really am there to. But it's that type of, I think it's really, with my Freemasonry, I kind of think as well, it's like, you know, when I joined, when I became a Freemason, I just thought like, you know what I mean? This is not going to help my acting at all. Do you know what I was like? Do you know? And I remember in Guy, Richie and Matt Vaughan, remember they were like, they were, they were in LA and they came into my hotel room and we were going to go somewhere and they saw the books on Masonry. Guy's really into it, right? But then they were like looking at it. They knew I'd just become Freemason. They were laughing. They were saying that joking, pulling my leg about it. But no, it's nothing there in it as such. But what's happened is, is that over the years, because with age comes wisdom, and over the years, you st I start, I'm starting to, and also, you know, how you get yourself across what you do, things, it's not the race, it's not for the swift, it's for that, he that, he that can endure, and it time takes time, and there's things that balance out, and, um, you know, I can kind of see where the two come into hand, so, uh, yeah, you know, those two things will be on the website and there'll be a link to United Grand Lodge of England because I'd like to get more black. And there are a lot of black, black, uh, black Freemasons, a lot of black Freemasons, but I'd like to say there's a lot of we make good men, better men. Um, there is also a women's Freemasonry in the UK. Uh, oddly enough, in the Telegraph, they had they had one of their two two women there they were being interviewed as well and one was um, an indian lady who's a dentist and she she was a, a worshipful master of her lodge and a women's lodge and then there was a a, a black girl caribbean i think she's from a Car either caribbean or africa who had just become a freemason so they're really trying to like you know show people it's like it's what you don't what you think it is it's not 
as it were so yeah so like you know I, i'm gonna get my website will have a link to the women's freemasonry as well as the men because i want i would like to see more black women get involved in it because you get amongst you, you know you're known by the company you keep to a certain degree and um it's just it's just more to do with self-improvement and the mind so this is where where i can see you know how it strengthened me as an actor do you know to keep like to keep yourself grounded and and then what's to come because in life generally even whether it's not acting or not what we all do you know you're all everyone's looking to you know you want to better yourself and you should never take desperate measures to better yourself you should just believe in yourself so you have to find a lot of self-belief so i can see where the masonry is now correlating with my acting and being an artist because i'm an artist ultimately speaking so yeah i'm looking forward to things ahead you know um and yeah and then like you know you guys getting in touch i mean some actors say oh no nah, man i did that ages ago i'm not talking about that but i'm quite the opposite because it's like you know everyone's life's like in a circle and it comes round to it and when it comes round to it you'll see the package of the work what you're walking about the marketplace with and people can't even they can't refuse you they gotta give it to you because they, they'll say you know you know man people like that they like what he does you know so it's kind of like it's just art you know and art, i mean right now there's a lot of platforms out there it's, it, my industry has changed to a degree but it's still the same thing you know so there's always a place and um i suppose it's you know it's just like you know that the, there's not I'm, i might not be able i might not ever work with a producer like ray butt again because just vintage but the respect has got to be given to me the fact that i did work with ray butt because if yeah. you look at the credits, if you look at the, and, and writers like John Sullivan. Hello? Is the internet gone?